Land Rover's fifth generation Discovery continues to offer the toughest, the most practical and the most capable choice in the large SUV sector, especially in this much improved form. It's now more sophisticated both in the cabin and under the bonnet, yet it continues to have its own authentic appeal. In many ways, it's the most complete expression of the Land Rover brand. In over three decades on sale, nothing else has quite replicated the Land Rover Discovery's blend of off-road capability, luxury and family practicality. Virtues emphasised by this fifth generation model originally launched in 2017. The new era Land Rover Defender though offers much of this as well at a similar price point. Rivals have upped their game, which is why in late 2020 the Solihull maker bought us a substantially revised version of the Discovery 5, the car that we're going to look at here. Without the Discovery model line it's doubtful whether the Land Rover brand would even exist today. Launched back in 1989, the original version merely bolted more spacious bodywork onto an aging Range Rover chassis. But the sales that this and the subsequent updated Discovery 2 design managed to generate were considerable. Enough to save the company and finance development of a properly sophisticated Discovery model, the third generation car launched back in 2004. Thanks to its double chassis and air suspended integrated body frame technology, this contender was able to match decent tarmac driving dynamics to Land Rover's legendary off-road prowess and customers loved it. So much so that the brand kept the same basic design for the Discovery 4 model of 2009 which added in a smarter cabin and more effective engine wear. When the time came to create the fifth generation version of this SUV though, this car, it was clear that a fresh direction would be needed. And that's what we got, the familiar body shape giving way to this sleeker silhouette that borrowed much from the smaller Discovery Sport model. What lay beneath the curvier panel work was even more significant. The old heavy duty body on frame architecture of the previous designs replaced by the more car like aluminium monocoque used by modern era large Range Rovers. All of this represented welcome evolution, but rivals still felt more sophisticated in terms of media connectivity and what lay beneath the bonnet. If you'd previously dismissed the Discovery for either of those reasons, you need to look again now because with this facelifted model things are very different. A range of new straight six mild hybrid petrol and diesel engines headline the changes, while inside the cabin gains the brand's latest PIVI Pro infotainment technology with its 11.4 inch screen. Suspensional and handling updates better prepare this car for the tarmac territory it'll be spending most of its time in. And of course this smarter, safer model is still king of the hill when it comes to off-road prowess and towing ability. In short, if this car can deliver on its promises, it'll achieve its maker's stated objective to produce nothing less than the ultimate family SUV, which all sounds quite promising. Time to put this car to the industry's most comprehensive test, the car and driving review. There's something rather grand about driving a Discovery if you can't afford a fully fledged Range Rover, it's this car, not the Range Rover Sport, that gets closest to emulating that plutocratic model's imperious gait, high seating position and easy ride comfort. Equip a Discovery to a higher level than we have here and you'll get something of a Range Rover feeling of luxury too. Like the Range Rover, uh, Discovery doesn't attempt to deliver the kind of cockpit-like design you'd get in a more car-like SUV with all the controls angled towards you. Here instead, the positioning is more about creating a place of command, a place to do business with the elements, be they the snake-infested swamps of the rainy season in the Serengeti or the snarled-up traffic of a wet, windy morning on the school run. You'll want to know about the changes made to this improved version of the Series 5 design and they really are quite fundamental thanks to the adoption of Land Rover's EVA 2.0 electrical vehicle architecture. 
This is an embellished version of the aluminium monocoque chassis that the Discovery 5 borrowed from the brand's two largest Range Rover models at its original launch back in 2017. Embellished because a more sophisticated platform was needed to accommodate the new generation of mild hybrid straight six petrol and diesel engines that this improved Discovery can now offer. This electrified change, Land Rover hopes, will leave Discovery customers continuing to feel that diesel is a viable option, despite the Green Lobby's disapproval of black pump fuel. Not that a follower of Al Gore would be particularly impressed by the economy and emissions improvements this car's mild hybrid tech has brought about, but choosing a diesel power plant does at least leave the running costs of this car on the right side of realistic. There are two to choose from, uh, the D250 and the D300 variant that we're trying here, these figures designating the braked horsepower outputs. The D250 makes 62 miles an hour in 7.6 seconds on the way to 120 miles an hour. The D300 improves those figures to 6.5 seconds and 130 miles an hour. Torque and pulling power though, not total output or ready acceleration, is the keynote here to facilitate the Discovery's easy gait, off-road prowess and prodigious towing capacity. And of course, as you'd expect, this car has all the grunt you'd ever want through the gears of its smooth, shifting, eight-speed ZF auto transmission. 570 newton meters of it in the case of the D250 and 650 newton meters in this D300. All of which is just as well given this SUV's near two and a half ton curb weight. As mentioned, there are petrol engines available too, though unlike a Defender or a Range Rover Sport, you can't have one mated to PHEV plug-in hybrid tech. You'll be offered two conventional green pump choices, but to be frank, we wouldn't really recommend either. The base P300 variant is the only model in the range to lack the mild hybrid tech and use only four cylinders, with a two-litre powertrain that struggles a little with the task of propelling a vehicle this heavy when the car's fully laden or on uphill gradients. Certainly more than you'd think after checking out the stated performance figures of the base variant, which sees 62 miles an hour dispatched in 6.9 seconds on the way to 125 miles an hour. The 400 newton meter torque figure is the key stat, quite enough for most cars, but not for one weighing nearly two and a half tons. Plus, a P300 four-cylinder Discovery isn't anything like as good as the other six-cylinder variants off-road. Uh, we'll tell you why in a moment. All of which means that those in search of a version of this car with petrol power would be better off going for the straight-six engine mild hybrid P360, which ups that torque figure to 500 newton meters and improves the performance readings to 6.5 seconds and 130 miles an hour. The only issue is fuel economy that'll see you struggling to reach 20 miles to the gallon around town, which is the kind of return you'd need deep pockets to justify. So that's covered the engines, which most of the time you'll be using in the two tarmac drive modes, Eco and Comfort, provided by the terrain response system you activate using this dial between the seats. If it's been upgraded to the terrain response 2 status we have here, then a press of the dial activates an auto setting that makes all the setting decisions for you. All of this tech is much the same as what you get in a Defender, a model which could also give you seven seats and even tougher capability. All of which meant the need to differentiate the Discovery Tarmac drive experience as part of this Series 5 design's midterm update. The main changes are suspension orientated, uh, new air springs and recalibrated dampers. But handling issues were also addressed and as a result the steering is now a little more precise and redesigned anti-roll bars quell this Discovery's propensity to roll at speed through tight bends. An improved so-called intelligent all-wheel drive version of the four-wheel drive system also helps here, maximizing traction, uh, on-road dynamics, and driveline efficiency. Overall, we're quite impressed with the differences that all these suspensional and handling changes have made. The standard air suspension now seems properly engaged with the business of directing your discovery where you point it working with those upgraded anti-roll bars to allow corners 
to be taken more quickly than they could be before. A lighter rival Audi Q7 or Volvo XC90 SUV would still perhaps be a little faster through any given set of turns, but wouldn't be any more stable or really any more enjoyable either. The vastly improved steering rack, uh, another thing borrowed from the Range Rover Sport, also helps immeasurably here, transforming the response that you get at the helm from being slow, heavy and spongy, as it was previously, to the light, direct and responsive demeanour now in evidence. But none of this was intended, or is, enough to make this into any kind of sporting SUV. As before, with the Discovery, driving enjoyment here is delivered through lowering the heartbeat rather than raising it. All manner of asphalt dispatched with a sense of imperious superiority that you might previously have thought only a fully-fledged Range Rover could deliver. Once you got used to substantial dimensions that initially make this Land Rover feel a little bulky on tighter country roads, you'll start to feel really confident in it, helped by that commanding driving position. There's a heft and a substance to everything a Discovery does that imbues real confidence, especially when you're towing, something you may well have chosen this car to do because it offers a class-leading three-and-a-half-ton brake towing weight capability. A rival Audi Q750 TDI can only tow 2.8 tonnes and a Volvo XC90 B5 diesel just 2.4 tonnes. That gives you some perspective on the enormous difference in ultimate capability that a Discovery owner would enjoy. If you want to further embellish that, an optional advanced tow assist system is designed to autonomously steer a hitched up trailer into place. All the driver has to do is to operate the accelerator and brake pedals. The capability that makes this such a great tow car is as expected even more in evidence when the time comes to leave the tarmac, which has a great deal to do with the fact that most versions of this Discovery can be fitted with a feature missing from nearly all this model's premium competitors, a twin-speed low-range gearbox that'll give you a whole extra set of low-range ratios that you'll need if the going gets really sticky. It's worth mentioning, though, that you can't have this feature on the base four-cylinder P300 petrol variant. It's only actually standard on the P360 and is optional with the two diesel variants. The base 2.0-litre P300 petrol model also does without the advanced driveline fitted on the bigger engines, which optimises the torque split between front and rear axles using a range of sensors to distribute torque to suit the conditions. Another reason not to choose that smaller engine. As before, a key part of this Land Rover's mud-plugging prowess is the acclaimed terrain response system we mentioned earlier which in its most basic form offers a choice of three selectable off-road settings to suit the ground that you're covering. Uh, grass, gravel, snow, uh, sand or mud ruts. The Solihull engineers have built on this by giving the Smart 5 Discovery a superb 500 millimeters of wheel articulation and a massive 900 millimeters of wading depth. If you're fording a river and wanting to test that second stat, you'll be able to use the clever wade sensing feature there to show you the depth of the water that you're driving through. A visual display and warning chimes will alert you as the water level rises around the vehicle. If you're a serious off-roader, you might want to go further. Indeed, you might feel the need to, given that this Discovery 5 still doesn't offer as much ground clearance as perhaps a committed off-piste driver might like. Thanks to its uh, rough integrated body frame double chassis underpinnings, a pre-2017 era Discovery 4 could sit as much as 310 millimetres from the ground. This car, in contrast, will ground out if obstacles beneath it are higher than 283 millimetres. To give you some class perspective, a saddle-suited Mercedes GLS can manage up to 306 millimetres. But don't be put off, because even so, this fifth-generation Discovery really can do almost everything off-road that you could manage in a comparable Defender. Particularly if you specify the optional advanced off-road capability pack that we've been trying here, which adds a package of further key items. 
Our favourite element is the Terrain Response 2 system, which, as its name suggests, is an upgraded version of the Terrain Response set I mentioned earlier. It works in the same way, but adds an extra rock crawl setting, and more importantly, a really useful auto mode. Uh, that's the one we mentioned earlier, analysing the conditions that you're driving in, then automatically selecting the most suitable terrain programme to cope. Plus, the pack also includes an all-terrain progress control system, essentially a kind of low-speed cruise control that helps you maintain steady progress on really challenging trails. And the advanced off-road capability pack gives you a fresh feature developed for this updated version of the Discovery 5, configurable terrain response, which allows you to alter the settings of the differentials, the powertrain, steering and the traction control for easier off-road prowess. If you can spend even more, we'd also consider adding the optional active rear locking differential, which will help extricate the car on really sticky surfaces. Even in its standard form though, this car should seriously impress you with what it can tackle off-road. With the air suspension raised to its highest point, there's an approach angle of 34 degrees that'll get you up steep slopes. And once you've used the hill descent control to ease you down them again, you'll be glad of a useful departure angle of 30 degrees. The ramp angle is equally impressive, giving you up to 27.5 degrees. In short, be assured, this discovery is almost certainly more talented off-road than you are. All that's necessary is that you acclimatise to its capabilities and press the right buttons. Then tune in to Radio 4 and watch the worst the elements can throw at you glide past the window. Of course, the greatest challenge this car will face in the hands of most likely owners will be that of the urban jungle. The styling of this fifth generation model helps to hide some of its bulk, but as we've already suggested, it's still an enormous thing nearly five metres long and over two metres wide, so you'll have to pay close attention when heading up multi-storey ramps or driving through barriers. Mind you, a turning circle of 12.3 metres is pretty good for a car of this stature, and we found reversing into bays to be simpler than in, say, an Audi Q7 or a Volvo XC90. Head out on the highway and you'll find this discovery can turn in a far more convincing performance as a luxury saloon than its predecessors. Even with its tall sides, there's no hint of it being swayed offline by crosswinds. Instead, it feels planted and solid, so you can sit back and relax as the suspension soaks away undulations and the engine purrs away in the background with a muted rumble. In summary then, despite all the fanfare surrounding the new era Defender, there's still very much a place for this car in the Land Rover lineup. A Defender makes a style and capability statement a big Range Rover offers a fashion statement. With a Discovery though, you're making a practicality statement. Families will continue to like it for that. We do too. You might not necessarily immediately appreciate that this was an evolved version of the fifth generation Discovery. But if you knew anything at all about this Land Rover model line, you'd certainly recognise it as a discovery. Key design cues familiar from previous generation designs, the clamshell bonnet, the stepped roof and the distinctive C-pillars see to that. This Mark V car though pushed its look a bit more upmarket and does so a little further with this midterm update thanks to redesigned LED headlights with animated indicators and a more distinctive daytime running light signature. Otherwise things are much as they were before, so the windscreen is quite angled unlike the boxy discoveries of old. Uh, there's a twin contoured bonnet and these vertical corner bumper outlets give the shape some overtaking presence while a prominent silvered skid plate lower down reminds the world at large of this Land Rover's SUV ancestry. Opt for an R design model and you get front fog lights plus a revised bumper with a wider body colour graphic. From the side you get a proper perspective for the sheer size of this car. It's nearly five metres long and more than two metres wide, though that's not really any larger than a rival Volvo XC90, and the length is actually a touch shorter than a rival Audi Q7. 
As usual with the Discovery, this rear seat pillar certainly does stand out, though in our view it also delivers a hint of Sanyong that the profile would have been better off without. Nicer is this side fender vent in the front wing, embellished with our design trim, uh, which blends into a rising crease that runs the length of the car. This swage line lower down gives the flanks some much needed shape and separates black plastic clad wheel arches housing rims between 20 and 22 inches in size. We've got 21 inch style spec five split spoke gloss silver rims here. Now we mentioned the signature stepped roof line earlier which is great for third row seating but means the need for a more bespoke set of roof rails which is probably why they cost extra and we don't have them here. This little black sliver at the top here at the rear is intended to reference the tiny narrow roof light windows of a Defender. Time to move to the rear, which was the most controversial part of this fifth generation model at launch, and still is, thanks to the curious offset placing of this number plate recess, supposedly a nod to discoveries of the past. Changes back here include these redesigned signature LED lights and this gloss black panel which includes the trademark discovery script. More significant though, as usual, are the things you can't see. At its original launch back in 2017, this Discovery 5 switched to the Range Rover Sports lighter aluminium monocoque, a chassis here updated to suit this improved model's latest mild hybrid engines. Land Rover refers to this enhanced platform as EVA 2.0, the letters standing for Electrical Vehicle Architecture. It's all very sophisticated, but unfortunately, it's also heavy, uh, despite all that aluminium. Further way down by all its four-wheel drive hardware, this car typically tips the scales at close to two and a half tons. Time to take a seat inside. You'd be disappointed if you didn't have to climb up into a Discovery, that's part of its appeal. Though older folk can ease the process by selecting the low set access mode provided as part of the air suspension settings. Once installed in the driver's chair, you get a commanding view of the road ahead that locates your eyeline several inches above where it would be in a German rival. In that respect, this car's similar to its Range Rover Sports Showroom Stablemate, but this cabin, quite intentionally, lacks the purposeful driver positioning of that car and some of the sheer indulgence of its fixtures and fittings. It does, however, in this improved form, gain more Range Rover Sport-like controls, this Sport Select gear lever replacing the old rising gear shift dial, and this four-spoke wheel instead of the more old-fashioned Range Rover style item. This cabin is also significantly more sophisticated than it used to be, primarily because of its adopted screen tech, this much bigger 11.4 inch PIVI Pro central infotainment monitor and an even larger 12.3 inch interactive driver display which replaces conventional dials in the instrument binnacle. As before, there's a clean, fresh, almost Scandinavian quality to the design, delivering a premium feeling very much able to equal what you get in obvious rivals. Previous Discovery models had rather too many white clean rubberized surfaces to feel really upmarket, but this one is much better. The stitching across the dashboard, silver trim around the centre stack and the steering wheel, piano black surfacing on the centre stack and even on this base S-Spec model you get these attractive driftwood style inlays. Finding a comfortable driving position could hardly be easier. These heated electrically operated front seats featuring either 14 18 or 20 way power adjustment depending on trim. You get a captain style armrest and standard upholstery either in grained leather or in this softer more eco based Lux tech material. Pay extra and you can add richer Windsor leather and cooling if you wish. But what about all this new media evolution? This more sophisticated central PIVI Pro screen has certainly brought the cabin bang up to date. A vast improvement over the previous in-control setup. And not only because this screen's 48% larger. Basically what's on offer here is a whole fresh generation of infotainment powered by dual SIM technology with two LTE modems, enabling the software to carry out multiple functions at the same time, such as streaming media or downloading software over the air updates that will enable the system to continually update itself. 
Apparently, 50% fewer inputs are required to operate this setup, and previous owners will immediately notice how much quicker everything is. Thanks to a built-in backup battery, initialization for the 3D navigation system takes just seconds. 4G Wi-Fi connectivity is optional, but if you have it, up to eight devices around the car can be connected, so your rear passengers will be grateful. Drivers will also appreciate the smarter, simpler menu structure. This right-hand menu gives you the screen's major sections, nav, phone, audio, and car. And as usual with these kinds of systems, there's a split main display that prioritizes the things that you'll need most frequently, probably nav, phone, and audio, as here. Unlike the old in-control setup, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring on this monitor with the option of wireless connectivity. But the voice control functionality here is nothing like as intuitive as that you'll find on German rivals. Still, there's a lot of detail buried in the car section, particularly in the ride height, 4x4i and eco data sections. Plus, a very good standard 360 degree surround view camera system that gives you on-road, off-road and towing camera viewpoints. Just about anything else you might need to know can be found on this interactive driver display instrument binnacle screen controlled by this new steering wheel's rather cheap feeling hidden until lit switches. The left one your access point to scroll through vehicle, media, trip and display menus. This Binnacle's TFT monitor isn't quite as customizable as the virtual cockpit display in a rival Audi Q7, but it does offer a choice of single or twin dial formats, or you can choose one with almost full screen mapping, or go for a layout prioritizing either media or driver assistance functions. And you can configure the info panel in the center of the screen with either a map, a trip summary, a media readout, or 4x4i info. Enough on media, now let's get practical. Cabin storage provision was an area in which the fifth generation Discovery took a big step forward at its original launch, and it's still impressive. The cleverest touch is this one, a little piano black trimmed compartment hidden behind the ventilation controls, ideal for stashing valuables out of sight. You might also be impressed by the fact that there are separate upper and lower glove boxes. The upper one has a 12 volt socket though unfortunately its lid won't stay open. An overhead sunglasses compartment has been forgotten and this small open cubby by the driver's right knee isn't good for much. But you get this decently sized storage area at the bottom of the center stack incorporating a cubby, a USB-C port and an optional wireless charging mat. And there's plenty on the lower center console between the seats. Sliding back this cover next to the redesigned gear stick reveals a couple of cup holders which in turn slide back to reveal a deep compartment beneath. For the back is this deep lidded box. When you lift its lid you'll find USB A and C ports plus a useful lift out tray beneath which is a deep compartment capable of holding up to four iPads or if you want to put drinks or snacks down here you can specify this area to be refrigerated you also get a curry hook in the passenger footwell for your Friday night takeaway. There are also decently sized door bins, each capable of holding a one litre bottle. And you'll find ticket clips in the sun visors. What else? Uh, these chunky ventilation controls are designed so that they can be easily used when wearing gloves. And you push each one for fan speed. Forward visibility is excellent, thanks not only to the commanding driving position, but also to the large windows. Your rearward view, unfortunately, as usual with seven-seaters, is heavily compromised when all three seating rows are in place. So it's disappointing that Land Rover doesn't offer here the little roof camera that in an Evoque projects the image onto the rear view mirror. Still, that 3D surround view camera system helps you out here. Plus, there are, of course, parking sensors fitted all around the car as standard. The head-up display is optional, and Land Rover has added the option of a sophisticated cabin air ionization system, which uses advanced filters to reduce the level of allergens, toxins, and harmful particulates in the cabin. Right, let's move rearwards. In many ways, the further back you go, the more spacious this discovery becomes by class standards. Something that's immediately obvious once you pull back this wide opening door, and take a seat in the second row. 
Now, though this middle compartment can't quite match the roomy feel you get in a rival Volvo XC90, there's 960 millimeters of legroom. So it's significantly more spacious than the longer Audi Q7 can manage to be. This low center transmission tunnel also makes it more viable for the transport of three fully grown adults who get uh, ports for almost every conceivable kind of media connectivity. There's both USB-A and USB-C ports, plus a 12 volt socket and click and go five volt attachment points on the front seat backs so that you can attach tablets and the like. Each seat can manually slide back and forth and you can electrically recline the backrests too. The second row seats have been redesigned for this improved version of the Discovery 5, now featuring improved lateral support, longer, thicker cushions and better profiling. All of it intended to enhance under thigh support and improve occupant posture. In another change, the vents for second row passengers have now been more conventionally positioned in the centre, having been moved from the B-pillars, which now, as a result, have been left with these curious open cubbies that aren't much good for anything. Another fairly useless cubby features by the centre vents, a space that would be used for the three or four zone climate control panel if this particular car had that feature. There are also seat back pockets, uh, overhead reading lights and stout handles on the B-pillars so that you can hold on if the driver gets a bit too enthusiastic off-road. You also get coat hooks in the overhead grab handles, Isofix child seat fastenings on the outer seats and the doors with their neat little round speakers feature decently sized bins. Time to take a seat in the third row. Now, it's impossible to imagine a Discovery without a third seating row, but that's what we would have had if the design team had incorporated the plug-in hybrid powertrain that Land Rover offers as an option on its other models, which is why PHEV Tech is lacking as an option for Discovery folk. Thanks to the fact that the previously optional powered rear seat package for the middle row is now standard across the range, uh, you might reasonably expect this outer second row chair to glide out of the way without any sort of huffing and puffing on your part. In actual fact though, the electric assistance only applies to this seat backrest. Uh, you actually have to push the seat base forward yourself and uh, back again afterwards. And once you've moved the middle seat out of the way, well, you'd think that a total body length, just a fraction under five meters, would make access to the very rear relatively straightforward. But as you can see, it's certainly not that easy to get to the third row chairs. Dropping the uh, suspension down to that lower access mode that we mentioned earlier will certainly help with the step up. But the wriggle required through this, this restricted gap uh, may still be, be beyond grandma if you're thinking of confining her to the very back of the car on your next Sunday afternoon trip out to the garden centre. Once you are inside, it's clear that this is that rarest of things, a seven-seat car that isn't a five-seater with a couple of extra boot-mounted child seats, which is all that nearly every opposition model leaves you with. We're thinking here of the rival XC90 and Q7 SUVs we mentioned earlier. And when they created this car, Land Rover's development department were two. A member of the team is six foot four inches tall and apparently he's quite comfortable in these seats. He was squashed and had his head shoved into the roof when the brand tested those rival Volvo and Audi models. Legroom is very reasonable by the mean standards of the class, as I've suggested but you might need middle row folk to push their sliding seats forward a little to help out. The 38 mm increase in wheelbase length incorporated into this fifth generation model certainly helps here. Each of these chairs have Isofix child seat fastenings. Why do so many car makers forget that when it comes to third row seating? Plus seat heating is optional. In addition, both occupants are provided with their own vents, uh, cup holders, LED lights, and individual lidded storage areas fitted with USB ports. And it helps that these rear side windows fitted out with heating elements are of a reasonable size. Let's finish by taking a look at the boot. At the time of the original launch of this fifth generation Discovery model, back in 2017, there was a lot of fuss made about Land Rover having dispensed with this Model Line's trademark split opening rear tailgate. 
mainly voiced by people who'd forgotten that the original first generation Discovery didn't feature one of those either. Fortunately, uh, buyers of this latest version aren't offered the awful heavy side hinge door that owners of that old car were stuck with, but instead are given a plastic hatch featuring the power operation and optional foot gesture control that for us has largely justified the switch in design this time round. In theory, you even get to keep the previous split folding arrangements tailgate picnic style functionality thanks to this welcome electrically deployable seat panel. Land Rover calls it a powered inner tailgate. In practice, this rather meanly proportioned bench is a bit narrow for a picnic perch, but it is ideal if you want somewhere to sit when you're pulling on your Wellingtons. And apparently it can take up to 300 kilograms, which will be good news for portlier owners. Uh, when you power it back up, it helps secure luggage in place. There won't be much of that, mind you, at least when the third row chairs are in place, in which configuration the Discovery offers 258 litres of cargo capacity, which is a bit less than you get from some comparable rivals when all the seats are up. Still, there's a helpful small underfloor compartment, pull-out sidewall bag hooks, LED lights on both sides and on the inner part of the tailgate, a 12-volt socket on the left, and the brilliantly useful extra functionality of being able to drop the air suspension down at the back to more easily get heavy items in. You'll immediately need to get familiar with this mildly confusing looking switch panel on the left hand cargo bay sidewall. Now this incorporates buttons for the air suspension lowering and powered inner tailgate features just mentioned, plus also in this case one for the optional electrically extending tow bar. The other buttons provided deal with seat retraction or erection. If this car had the optional third row electrical activation system, there'd be a couple of extra switches in this space here. You don't have to use this panel for powered seat functionality. Uh, electric rear seat activation can also be operated via the Center Dash PIVI Pro screen or for ultimate supermarket car park theater, an intelligent seat fold system, optional on most models, allows you to flatten or raise all the seats in just 14 seconds using an app on your smartphone. Here we'll need to drop these two third row chairs into the floor using these provided straps, at which point a huge 1,137 litres of capacity will be freed up. It's not quite a class leading figure, but it's enough for up to nine carry-on suitcases. An Audi Q7 can take 10, while a BMW X7 from the next class up can swallow 11 with five seats in use. Still, what's available here should be more than enough for most needs, and thanks to the 40-20-40 split second row seat back of this improved Discovery 5, you can now push longer items like skis through into the cabin without disturbing a couple of middle row passengers. If you do need more space, you can power the middle chairs forward, a lengthy process that takes 14 seconds, much longer than it would have taken to do the job manually in the original version of this fifth generation model. Uh, by the way, if you're worried about the potentially rather dangerous combination of power folding seats and young children, you need to know that the seats include weight sensors, and that means that they won't fold if someone's sitting on them. Once everything's flat, you're left with a vast and pretty flat cargo area with more than two meters of load length and 2,391 litres of total capacity. That's the best part of 500 litres more than you get in a Q7 or an XC90. An enormous difference. Securing hooks in the floor help you make the most of it. From launch, Land Rover was asking in the £54,000 to £68,000 bracket for passenger versions of this improved Discovery. The range kicks off with a conventional four-cylinder, two-litre petrol-powered P300 model with 300 horsepower. Otherwise, though, you'll be getting yourself one of Land Rover's new generation straight-six mild hybrid units, either a 360-horsepower P360 petrol variant or, more likely, one of the two available diesels, either the 249-horsepower D250 or the 300-horsepower D300 version that we're trying here. As usual on JLR models these days, an eight-speed auto transmission is mandatory. 
What's lacking though is the kind of plug-in hybrid option that you tend to get on many other Jaguar Land Rover models. Uh, that would have compromised this car's third row seating, which is a discovery unique selling point. Whatever engine suits in this car, you'll be matching it to a choice of various trim levels. Uh, there's base S-Spec, which is what we have here. And beyond that, uh, a range of sportier looking options. Uh, R-Dynamic S and R-Dynamic SE for the mainstream. And for the top uh, most powerful petrol and diesels, there's R-Dynamic HSE. For businesses needing SUV style off-road capability, the brand also offers a Discovery commercial variant, only available with the D300 engine and offered with a choice of SE or HSE trim at prices which from launch started at around £58,500 to just over £63,000. Though you can uh, trim just over £10,000 from those figures if you're able to reclaim the VAT. Here though, our focus is on the conventional passenger carrying variant, a car you really need, we think, to have with six cylinders and Solihull's mild hybrid engine tech, which is why at the foot of the range, most customers pay the fraction more that Land Rover wants for the base D250 diesel rather than the base P300 petrol variant. The top D300 diesel and P360 petrol versions are also quite comparably priced, but there's quite a price premium to graduate up to them. Anything between 4,000 to 8,000 pounds, depending on the trim level you select. So make sure that you really need the extra power. In explaining the value proposition here against rivals, we'll start by positioning this car in the Land Rover lineup for you. The Solihull brand's most comparably priced Range Rover model, that's the Range Rover Velar, is a smaller car with only five seats. So the most obvious competitor here, you'd think, would be a Land Rover Defender 110, which has much of the same engineering as a Discovery, but unlike a Disco, can be had with PHEV plug-in tech. The two cars are quite similarly priced with the base D250 and P300 engines, but with this top D300 MHEV diesel unit, a Discovery can be over £5,000 cheaper. The difference large enough to be significant, particularly as a Discovery is slightly better specified. As for other Land Rover models, well, the figure necessary to upgrade yourself from the smaller Discovery Sport into this full fat Discovery model is difficult to determine as the Disco Sport uses smaller engines. Think uh, eight to 10,000 pounds more for this larger model and you're probably in about the right ballpark. You're less likely to have your eye on another comparably engineered Solihull model, the Range Rover Sport partly because that model's optional third row seats aren't as practical, but mostly because it costs 10 to 15,000 pounds more. What about rivals from other brands? The most obvious three competitors, Volvo's XC90, Audi's Q7, and Mercedes GLE, begin at very similar prices to those that Land Rover is asking here, so in the uh, 55,000 to 60,000 pound bracket upwards. All three, unlike the Discovery, can also be had with plug-in powertrains and handle twisting tarmac slightly better. But the Discovery has a roomier third row, a more spacious boot, a better towing capability and more off-road capability. In our experience, those last two attributes can only really be completely matched in this class by a Toyota Land Cruiser, which in comparably specced Invincible trim also costs about the same as an entry-level Discovery, but feels far cruder to drive and will cost you much more to run. Possibly a better option, we think, would be the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which in long wheelbase form is now available with three seating rows, but that SUV lacks this Land Rover's ultimate levels of practicality. Everything else that you could reasonably consider in this segment, quite frankly, won't hold a candle to this Land Rover when it comes to off-road prowess or towing capability. If something of this car's size and capability is really what you need, you certainly shouldn't be distracted by seven-seat SUVs that compete more directly with the smaller Discovery Sport. Models like Skoda's Kodiak, uh, Seat's Taraco, Volkswagen's Tiguan Allspace, the DS7 Crossback, and the Sanyong Rexton. They're all uh, based on the platform engineering of smaller mid-sized crossovers. Not the same thing at all. Closer, but not 
quite close enough to this discovery size are two Korean models, Kia Sorento and Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, think around 45,000 for a comparably equipped version of one of those. What else? Well, the Toyota Motor Corporation fields a couple of self-charging hybrid models in this class, the Toyota Highlander, priced from around £50,000, and the Lexus RXL, which costs around the same as a, as a Discovery, but neither of those two are really engineered for life away from the bitumen, and both are rather cramped in the third row. The same is true of BMW's X5, which can be fitted with rather cramped third row seating as an option. Still, at least these models can have a third row, unlike other large SUVs in this class like Volkswagen's Touareg and Porsche's Cayenne. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is this Land Rover you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand has been with standard spec. Well, you shouldn't be disappointed. As you'd probably expect, every variant gets full-time four-wheel drive and that eight-speed automatic gearbox that we mentioned earlier. Plus, uh, with all discoveries, you get seven seats and air suspension with adaptive dynamics, adaptive damping. There's also Land Rover's acclaimed terrain response system. Uh, that's there to offer a choice of selectable settings to suit the type of ground that you're traveling on. And a clever wade sensing feature that provides depth information when driving through water. All discoveries with six cylinder engines feature an advanced driveline which optimizes the torque split between front and rear axles using a range of sensors to distribute torque to suit the conditions. Plus, this improved model's latest intelligent all wheel drive system maximizes traction, on road dynamics, and driveline efficiency. Now, talking of all wheel drive, the key thing that separates this car from most of its rivals and most mainstream versions of the pricier Range Rover Sport is the proper off-road orientated twin-speed low-range transfer box that can be fitted to six-cylinder models, though it's only actually standard on the P360 petrol variant. You'll want to have this feature, which equips this SUV for really gnarly off-road expeditions you'll picture yourself taking, but probably never will. It'd be great for a boggy car park, though. Beyond that, you're certainly going to need some guidance in choosing the right specification and options for your car. So let's now get into looking at what the various trim levels provide. Now, even this base S spec gives you big 20 inch style, five split spoke gloss silver alloy wheels, full LED headlights, LED tail lamps, a heated windscreen, power folding door mirrors, cruise control and keyless entry and there's a 3D surround view camera which uses five digital cameras providing an almost complete 360 degree view of the outside of the car. The kind of feature that would only be an extra or limited to plush specification with obvious rivals. As part of this you get the brand's clever clear sight ground view technology providing drivers with a view of the obscured ground directly beneath the front of the vehicle using the central touchscreen and a combination of forward facing cameras. This clever feature is the realization of Land Rover's futuristic transparent bonnet concept and supports the driver when negotiating steep off-road inclines or hidden urban obstacles. Now talking of cameras, there's a wide range of camera safety features fitted as standard across the Discovery range. Uh, we'll brief you on those in a moment. And as a Discovery owner, you can also tick off provision of a reduced section spare wheel, a parametric alarm and 12 months of subscription to a secure tracker system that'll locate your car if it's stolen. Inside, with base S-Spec, you get a 12.3 inch interactive driver display screen to replace the usual dials, along with leather seat facings. Though here we've got the no-cost option of uh, more eco-friendly Luxtech upholstery, combined with suede cloth. The front seats are 14-way electrically operated and heated at this level in the range, plus they include captain-style armrests. You also get two-zone climate control and auto headlamps and wipers. For the rear, there are click-and-go fitments so that you can attach tablets to the front seat backs, plus electrically retracting second row seats, an electrically operating rear hatch, and a powered inner tailgate. That's a little ledge that retracts over the bumper so that you've got somewhere to sit when you're putting on your wellies. 
Infotainment's now taken care of by a much improved centre touchscreen, an 11.4 inch PIVI Pro infotainment monitor in the centre of the dash. Your access point for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring that the original version of this Mark 5 model lacked. Plus, you get an 8 speaker DAB sound system, uh, Bluetooth and 3D navigation. The PIVI Pro system also includes an online pack with data plan. Uh, that's 12 months of data so that you can enjoy your favorite music streaming from multiple sources including Spotify, TuneIn and Deezer. PIVI Pro also comes with seamless connectivity ensuring that your discovery will stay up to date through over the air software updates. So you'll get into it one day and find it able to do something that it couldn't do the day before which is rather cool. The PIVI Pro infotainment system works with a remote app that allows you to control all kinds of vehicle functions from your smartphone. Uh, you can preset navigation destinations, confirm your vehicle's location, check fuel levels and set the interior temperature, all before you open the car door. Along the way, intelligent rerouting can find you the best road to take, as well as updating parking availability, fuel price comparisons, cafe locations and traffic hotspots. Intelligent and intuitive, it seeks to learn your regular favourite routes so that the navigation system's smart voice guidance can make sure your favourite song won't be interrupted with unnecessary instructions. So that's covered off everything you get with this entry-level S spec. Most discovery buyers, though, choose one of the models fitted out with Land Rover's R Dynamic Pack, which gives this car a sportier look thanks to a bespoke front bumper with front fog lights, smarter wheel designs, a black exterior pack, darkened LED tail lamp clusters, and a shadow aluminium trim finisher, plus a few extra interior touches like branded metal tread plates, duotone seat upholstery finishes, and an ebony morzine headliner. Your R Dynamic package options depend on the engine you choose. With the base petrol and diesel P300 and D250 models, you choose between R Dynamic S and R Dynamic SE. With the punchier P360 and this D300 variant, the choice is between R Dynamic SE and R Dynamic HSE. If your budget limits you to R Dynamic S spec, you can expect the R Dynamic pack of features we just mentioned, plus all the equipment that we briefed you on with our perusal of S spec. If, though, you can stretch to an R Dynamic SE model, there's quite a bit more. Starting with upgraded premium LED headlights that gain signature daytime running lights, uh, auto high beam assist, automatic leveling, animated indicators and power washing. Plus, at this level, you get larger 21-inch diamond-turned gloss dark grey wheels, fixed front and rear panoramic roofs, an electrically adjustable steering column, 18-way power adjustable front seats and a much more powerful 400 watt 12 speaker meridian sound system with a dual channel subwoofer. The ultimate spec level available applies to the R Dynamic HSE trim that you can have with P360 and D300 variants. Here there are matrix LED headlights that intelligently react to weather and road conditions plus larger 22 inch wheels, a powered gesture system for the tailgate 20-way powered front seat adjustment, electric operation for the third row seat retraction, premium cabin lighting, and an even more powerful 700 watt 14 speaker Meridian sound system. On to extra cost options. Most of the upper spec features just mentioned can be added into lesser models at extra cost, though as usual, you'll be more limited in the additions that you can make to lesser derivatives. Before ticking the boxes for particular items, first have a look at the various optional packs your dealer will want to tell you about, which bundle together key items more cost effectively. The family pack is quite popular, giving you four zone climate control, privacy glass, a load space partition net, and if your discovery doesn't have a sliding front sunroof and a fixed rear panoramic roof, you'll get those too. Uh, you might also want to consider the Hot Climate Pack, which gives you a solar attenuating windscreen, a front centre console cooler compartment, four zone climate control and a cabin air purification system. 
There's also an individual extra available across the range that we think all owners will want to look at specifying. Uh, the activity key, a useful thing to have as you can wear it like a watch, yet open and lock the car just by presenting it to the tailgate. The activity key available on this updated Discovery model is a second generation version featuring touchscreen controls and a digital watch. It's there to make easier the kind of outdoor pursuit, rough road lifestyle this car was designed for. And if you exercise the potential of that to the full, you might want to look at options that embellish this Discovery's off-road ability. This particular car has the optional advanced off-road capability pack fitted, which gives you four features that can also be ordered separately. Now, first, there's the two-speed transfer box that we mentioned earlier with its low range ratios, if your Discovery doesn't already have it. Plus, the pack gives you all-terrain progress control. Essentially, that's a kind of low-speed cruise control that helps you maintain steady progress off the beaten track. And configurable terrain response allows you to alter the settings of the differentials, the powertrain, steering, and the traction control for easier off-road prowess. Finally, there's the Terrain Response 2 package, which, as its name suggests, is an upgraded version of the Terrain Response setup mentioned earlier. It works in the same way, but adds an extra rock crawl setting, and more importantly, a really useful auto mode, which analyzes the conditions that you're driving in, then automatically selects the most suitable terrain program to cope. Those are the four items of the advanced off-road capability pack, but if you'll be regularly venturing to seriously desolate places off track, you'll additionally want to pay more for the active rear locking differential, which will supply extra traction in really boggy or slippery situations. There's also a wade mode, which applies the brakes automatically once you've finished deep water fording to restore full disc performance from the first time that you apply the brakes once back on tarmac. Another optional pack, the towing pack, also gives you all terrain progress control and the terrain response to package, but pairs these features with elements tailored for discovery owners who regularly hitch up. Uh, there's obviously a tow bar, electrically deployable, which is packaged up with automatic headlight leveling. That's if your Discovery doesn't already have it. Uh, plus, Land Rover's advanced tow assist system, which will be a massive help when you're hitched up and trying to park a, a trailer. With advanced tow assist, images from a rear-facing camera are relayed to the central touchscreen, and the driver can maneuver using the Terrain Response 2 system's rotary controller. The system will then autonomously steer the trailer into place. All the driver has to do is to operate the accelerator and the brake pedals. What else might you want to look at? Uh, well, you'll probably want roof rails. They're available in either black or silver. And if you avoid entry-level S trim, you can have a contrast-coloured roof too. And on all models, you can embed into that roof Land Rover's panoramic glass panels, if they're not already fitted to the variant that you're looking at. There are two, and the front one can electrically slide if you pay more. If you're shopping lower down the range, you might want to consider upgrading the LED headlights uh, to either premium or intelligent matrix spec. You can also add animated directional indicators. Give some thought to the seats as well. On lower order models, you might want to upgrade to front chairs with 18 or 20 way adjustment with or without memory settings. And if you opt for 20 way adjustment, you can have them cooled as well. Softer Windsor leather upholstery is also available. You can add heating and possibly also cooling to the second row seats. And it's possible to add heating to the third row seating as well and an electrical retraction system that folds the third row seats into the floor at the push of a button. That last option is quite a useful one to have because it means that you can then make full use of Land Rover's much trumpeted intelligent seat fold system that enables you to fold all the rear seats using a smartphone app. We mentioned the hot climate pack earlier. 
if you want to specify individual extras to keep cabin temperature in check, you can tick specific boxes for privacy glass, a solar attenuating windscreen and cabin preconditioning. Plus there's a choice of either three or four zone climate control systems. We'd also want to consider this revised model's new cabin air ionization setup, which uses uh, PM 2.5 air filtration technology to actively scan incoming air, measuring its quality and automatically using advanced filters to reduce the levels of allergens, toxins and harmful particulates in the cabin. For the winter, you might want a heated steering wheel and heated washer jets and you can add a cooler compartment into the front center console box between the seats. A head up display is available and on lower order models you can upgrade the audio either with the 400 watt Meridian sound system or the 700 watt top of the range Meridian surround sound system. You have to pay extra for wireless device charging also extra is a Wi-Fi feature for the center screen, which comes with a data plan, giving you up to 20 gigabytes of data per month, enough for browsing your socials, playing online games, or immersing yourself in a movie. As for aesthetics, well, if you don't want the single standard solid paint color, uh, that's Fuji White, you'll have to pay extra for one of the metallic and premium metallic paint finishes, including some new shades, uh, Lantau Bronze, Hakuba Silver, and Charente Grey. We've got premium metallic Namib Orange here. You can upgrade the wheels. Uh, there are various 21 and 22 inch styles available. Uh, these optional 21 inch diamond turned five split spoke silver rims are particularly nice. And you can also add chromed mirror covers, black side vents, black or bright finished body side mouldings, and if you really must, bright side tubes. On the base S model, you can also add the smarter front grille from the R Dynamic level of specification. As for the inside, you can add in aluminium, oak or titanium mesh interior finishing to further smarten the cabin. Plus you can specify an extended leather upgrade which adds stitched leather to the dash and doors. Sport pedal covers, door sill outer tread plates, ebony colored premium carpet mats and a windscreen sun shield are all available. You might also want to embellish the interior with premium cabin lighting, a powered steering column, and a steering wheel wrapped in Dynamica. That's a kind of Alcantara. On to more practical extra cost features. We mentioned the electrically deployable tow bar earlier. You can obviously specify that individually. And we would want a proper full-sized spare wheel to replace the reduced section spare that comes as standard. Some owners might also want to upgrade the, the car's vehicle tracking system to secure Tracker Pro status. For the boot, you can specify a gesture controlled tailgate which will open the rear hatch with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper if you come approaching the car laden down with baggage. You can also add a load space partition net, a load space liner, a load space rubber mat extension and rubber mats for both the load area and the cargo area sides. There's also a rigid organizer system for the load space along with side and partition netting. What else? Well, protective seat covers might be useful if you've got pets and if you have, you may want to look at Land Rover's range of bespoke pet products, which includes a pet access ramp, a portable rinse system, a spill resistant water bowl, a foldable pet carrier and a quilted load space liner. These various pet items can be grouped together more affordably into special packs. Other optional practicalities are more predictable. The usual side steps and mud flaps plus the crossbars that would enable you to add carriers for things like skis, snowboards or a roof box. There's also an aqua sports carrier that can take up to two kayaks. On to safety and we'll start with the standard features. As you'd expect, autonomous emergency braking is standard. One of those setups that scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be, be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Lane departure warning also comes as standard with lane keep assist so that you'll not only be alerted if you drift out of lane, but subtle steering correction will automatically be applied to ease you back to where you ought to be. 
There's also a driver condition monitor that scans your reactions for drowsiness and, if necessary, will alert you to stop for a restorative coffee. Traffic sign recognition pictures speed signs as you pass, displaying them on the dash. And if you have a tow bar fitted, there's trailer stability assist to prevent trailer sway. All models also benefit from an e-call system that will automatically alert the emergency services as to your exact location should the airbags ever go off. Other standard safety features may be more familiar to you. We're impressed that Isofix child seat fastenings are fitted in the third row as well as in the second row. Other standard safety items include a pedestrian friendly bonnet, tyre pressure monitoring, brake lights that flash in an emergency stop, and a whole bouncy castle quota of eight airbags. More specifically, as well as airbags for both front seat occupants, you get side curtain and thorax airbags and an extended curtain airbag that covers passengers right back to the third row seating. Hopefully you'll never need any of this, but to try and ensure that the worst never happens, there's a whole raft of electronic assistance features. On road, as well as the usual anti-lock brakes with EBA emergency brake assist, these include DSC, dynamic stability control, ETC, electronic traction control, RSC, that's roll stability control, and if you need it, there's that trailer stability assist system I mentioned earlier. Off road, you're more likely to use hill start assist to get you up steep slopes, GAC gradient acceleration control to ease you over the summit and HDC hill descent control to help you slither down the other side. Want to go further? Well, we should mention that our Dynamic SE and our Dynamic HSC models uh, get a blind spot assist pack which includes three features. A blind spot monitor that works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of other vehicles. A clear exit monitor, which warns passengers against opening their doors in the face of imminently oncoming traffic. And there's a rear traffic monitor, which warns you of approaching vehicles if you're reversing out of a space. The blind spot assist pack can be added in further down the range at extra cost. And all its features come included as part of a driver assist pack that's standard on the top R-Dynamic HSE level of trim, but which you can pay extra to specify on any model. That driver assist pack includes two more camera driven features. There's a rear collision monitor, which uses sensors on the rear corner of the vehicle to identify uh, potential collision risks. If necessary, flashing the hazard lights to warn an approaching driver and you get Land Rover's useful adaptive cruise control with Q-Assist system. Here, a radar mounted in the front grille maintains a steady distance to the car in front at cruising speeds and can break your discovery, then automatically start it off again if you come across a traffic tailback. We're tempted to start this section by saying that it's impossible to get around the fact that this is a very heavy car. But that's patently untrue because Land Rover has tried very hard to get around this issue. And it would be churlish for us not to recognise the extent of their efforts. In this regard, your dealer will be quick to talk about the benefits of the 48 volt mild hybrid electric vehicle technology that this improved Discovery's latest straight six petrol and diesel ingenium engines offer. They might also reference the weight saving that's come courtesy of this current fifth generation model's adoption of the aluminium monocoque borrowed from larger Range Rovers, though we'd point out that 15% of the structure is actually still mainly made up of steel. Add that onto the prodigious weight of this car's properly beefy four-wheel drive hardware and you've an SUV that tips the scales at 2,380 kilograms in this mainstream diesel form. It'd be closer to two and a half tons with a few options added. Think in terms of 150 to 200 kilograms more weight to cart around the most obvious segment rivals and you won't be too far out. Which is a huge disadvantage to start off with when it comes to issues of running cost efficiency, but the inevitable downside of producing a car that's properly capable off the beaten track in a way that most of its rivals can't pretend to be. 
that 48 volt mild hybrid tech represents Land Rover's attempt to minimize that downside. The Solihull engineers couldn't go further and create the option of the plug-in hybrid system available on the brand's other models because that would have compromised third row seating space. A full hybrid power plant, uh, like uh, the kind of thing this segment offers in a Toyota Highlander or a Lexus RXL, would have been a better solution, but Land Rover doesn't have anything like that. So what we've got instead is the usual rather fudged mild hybrid compromise. In this case, the engine's conventional twin scroll turbocharger works in conjunction with a 48 volt electric supercharger powered by a tiny battery. This setup very lightly assisting the engine in the mid-range and in its town driving start-stop mode. But there aren't enough lithium-ion cells to enable the car to ever run independently on battery-only power. And the running cost benefits, to be frank, aren't huge. Certainly not big enough to offset this design's portly downsides. Let's get to the figures, all of which assume use of the most frugal of the available driving modes, Eco. We'll start with the D250 and D300 diesel variants, which both return identical WLTP readings, up to 33.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 218 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's way off the top segment standard amongst rivals not engineered for off-roading in the way that this Discovery is. A mild hybrid Volvo XC90 B5 diesel, for instance, manages up to 40.9 miles per gallon and 180 grams per kilometre of CO2. But it's not much worse than an Audi Q750 TDI mild hybrid, 35.8 miles per gallon and 208 grams per kilometre. And it's way better than a competitor with similar off-road ability, a long wheelbase Toyota Land Cruiser, manages only 29.4 miles per gallon and 246 grams per kilometre. With the petrol models, you've got the rather counterintuitive situation that the six-cylinder, three-litre, 360 horsepower P360 variants figures, up to 26.7 miles per gallon and up to 238 grams per kilometre, are more economic and frugal than those of the base four-cylinder, two-litre, 300 horsepower P300 version, which records up to 25.3 miles per gallon and up to 251 grams per kilometre. That's because the six-cylinder petrol model alone features that mild hybrid tech. If you needed yet another reason uh, not to choose the P300 derivative, there it is right there. These figures, as you'd expect, given the MHEV tech much closer to the class standard than those of the original Mark V model's older generation units, are also aided by a number of other measures introduced to try and keep this car's efficiency showing within reasonable bounds. This fifth generation model is 15% more aerodynamically sleek than the old Discovery 4, the improvement down not only to the curvier bodywork, but also to the addition of a front air curtain that allows the wind to pass into the front wheel arches to give a better flow over and around the car. Plus, at high speeds, the electronically controlled air suspension automatically lowers the body by 13 millimetres to create less resistance. As you'd expect, there's also a stop-start system to cut the engine when you're waiting at the lights or sitting in a queue. Um, all the engines on offer in the lineup use variable exhaust valve timing and selective catalytic reduction for extra cleanliness. And the black pump fuel ones, as with most modern diesels, have an AdBlue after treatment system that sprays an aqueous urea solution into the exhaust system, neutralizing harmful gases like nitrogen oxide. You can top up this solution's tank yourself, or any Land Rover dealer will fill it for you when required around every 9,000 miles. Talking of tanks, the fuel one is usefully large, 89 litres for the petrol and 90 litres for the diesel, which should give a driving range of well over 500 miles. Of course, the driver will need to play his or her part in pursuit of cleanliness and frugality, keeping an eye on the eco data part of the infotainment screen. Here you get various screen options. Uh, there's one that shows you the energy impact of various electrical items, uh, the air conditioning, the heated rear window, the heated windscreen, and the heated seats. And another with so-called eco tips that are supposed to improve your frugality. 
though some of these, to be frank, are a bit blindingly obvious. Things like, apply the accelerator smoothly and progressively, and try to maintain a low engine RPM. More useful is the driving style display that marks your driving efficiency from one to five in two areas, economy and speed, giving you a driving score. There's also a history section which graphically shows your success, or otherwise, at frugality over your most recent journeys, awarding you a little trophy for the most frugal one. It'll also help that the routing software in the PV Pro navigation system can propose an economical route option to minimize fuel consumption. What else? Uh, insurance? Well, the ratings here depend quite a lot on the uh, trim level and engine you select. If you go for the D250 diesel model, the ratings start at Group 3080 or 40E. For this D300, it's 41E or 45E. For the P300 petrol four-cylinder model, it's 39E or 40E. And for the six-cylinder P360, it's 41E or 45E. As for depreciation, well, you'll be expecting that to be significant. Uh, it always is with any large luxury SUV. Those models in greatest demand, of course, shed less of their value. And this discovery remains in great demand on the used market. Hence, strong retained values, which for mainstream models uh, vary between 56.8% and 58.7% of original purchase price after a typical three-year ownership period. As a result, leasing rates for this car aren't as high as the list figure asking prices might lead you to believe. Even the green lobby feels more kindly towards this model these days, and that wasn't always true. After all, in 2005, Greenpeace activists chained themselves to vehicles on the solid hull production line in protest. They shouldn't bother to do that now, such have been the eco efforts made in this Mark V design. Up to 50% of the aluminium much of it is fashioned from is sourced from recycled content, which is a useful stat to have if you come across disapproving green bearded folk. You might also mention that in a decade or so's time when comparable German SUVs are being driven to the recycling plant, this discovery will almost certainly still be going strong. A three year unlimited mileage warranty comes with this model, along with three years of roadside recovery. Plus, there are further extension packages available if you want them. In addition, there's a PIVI Pro remote app that allows you to monitor vital stats on your car from your smartphone and will guide the breakdown services to your discovery should it ever have a problem. Also included is European cover and a promise to get you on your way as soon as possible in your own car or in a loan vehicle if the required repair will take longer than four hours. As for maintenance, well, your costs here will be at a different level from what you've paid to look after a similarly priced luxury saloon, particularly when it comes to tires and brakes, budget accordingly. Having said that, a Discovery shouldn't cost any more to maintain than a comparable Audi Q7 or Volvo XC90. Routine servicing appointments can be up to 21,000 miles apart, though that figure could vary depending on how you use your car. If you want to budget ahead for garage visits, an optional advanced service plan pack uh, will cover all maintenance for five years or 50,000 miles, for a price no more than the cost of a single full service on a rival Audi Q7. Worth knowing. The world takes on a different appearance from behind the wheel of a Land Rover Discovery. It always did, and it still does. At the helm, you know you're in a car that can take on just about anything, be that a 7-up trip to the Alps or a relaxing ride home on a wet and slippery winter's night. But it's only when you put it through its paces in properly extreme terrain that the genius in its design becomes fully apparent. How can a car capable of such extremes on the rough stuff be so utterly easy to use on the school run? Only Land Rover knows. Of course, German branded SUV rivals are sportier, but then the Solihull brand has the Range Rover Sport and possibly also the Range Rover Velar to take them on. For those who can afford it. Those who can't and want to buy British need a discovery that can stay in the same dynamic ballpark as, say, an Audi Q7 or a Volvo XC90, at the same time as continuing to obliterate cars of that kind off-road. 
They want a discovery that isn't vastly more expensive to run than more compromised competitors, and one that can be ordered with all the high-tech gadgetry those rivals offer. This usefully improved Discovery 5, Land Rover says, is that car, and in many ways they're right. There's certainly a lot to admire about the way the brand so successfully reinterpreted the Discovery concept for a new, more challenging era. Though we worry that as part of the process, this may have become more of a Range Rover product with slightly more practical packaging. There are a few other concerns too. Like most reviewers, and we suspect many potential buyers, we still think the rear styling looks a little awkward. Some people also continue to bemoan the passing of the split rear tailgate we saw in previous generation Discovery models, though that's a matter of preference. Perhaps a bigger problem is that this car still has a weight issue. It's been helpful that Land Rover has adopted aluminium intensive architecture and added in its latest mild hybrid engine tech to try and alleviate the effect of this. But the simple truth is that this Discovery's efficiency figures, though now much better than before, still lag behind those of obvious rivals. But then that's an almost inevitable byproduct of creating such a capable SUV. One that has so much sheer depth to its ability that at the wheel you constantly find yourself being tempted to test it, to enjoy what it can do. Pothole tracks no longer need to be tackled at a snail's pace. The softest roadside verges become viable turning opportunities and any muddy bank cries out to be driven down and up again, just for the heck of it. Other rival SUVs claim to be tough, but at the wheel, you're always a little hesitant to see them prove that. A Discovery is different. Thanks to a clever, classless feel that nothing else can quite replicate, it brings a wonderful authenticity to its market segment. Enough to make it the world's ultimate family SUV? Well, that depends on your perspective. The current Defender also lays claim to that title, which perhaps is why Land Rover has made this improved Discovery just a bit better suited to tarmac territory. Plus, this Disco is usefully cheaper than a Defender and more comfortable in the third row. If these things tip the balance in its favour for you, then you'll find that what you get here is very definitely the genuine article. One thing's for certain, there's nothing else quite like it. <laughs>